so happy for all of you that are here tonight we thank God for what he has done for what he continues to do reaching out to us time and time again trying his best to prepare us for the kingdom if we'll just allow it if we just let it happen I am encouraged tonight that no matter what comes or goes that I'm gonna go with God I have that my mind was made up years ago Never looked back, never thought about looking back. Life is too good, it's too sweet. I'm preaching to you tonight on something that I never would have went this, this way. Never would have. But when I look at it, I am reminded of how the enemy is taking advantage of the people of God. And he's doing it because we don't see and we don't know 
neither do we understand. So as I look at this, I, I want to take my time tonight to explain to you what God has given to me that you might free yourself. You can be free. Sometimes you're sitting in church, you say, well, I am free. No. If something is not straight up here, you're not free. The mind is the battleground for the soul. That's where the enemy starts. Everything that will ever happen in your life is in your mind. And once he builds what he wants, he has a way of putting it in a stronghold that you don't shake it. That's how we end up believing lies instead of the truth. So I'm going to read a little bit to you here tonight from Judges, uh, the 16th chapter, I think. Yes. And this is what happened. You heard the story about Samson. It says, Delilah was a problem, as she is to most men. It's a sad, sad thing. But listen to this. The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. She made him sleep on the, on, upon her knees. She called for a man and caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before, and I will shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. How many times have you thought, I'm just going to continue to do what I did before? Uh, it always worked then. Is it working now? Listen to this. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, Our God, Dagon, hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me, that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and they were upon the roof of about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee. And strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistine for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. I, I want you to listen very carefully to this. When I began to look at this, I, I understood that they had, placed, they had placed Samson in a place at some point that was going to give him victory, but they didn't know that. So when they put his eyes out, that's what the devil did. I said this morning, we don't, we don't hear and we don't see because the devil puts your eyes out. So you don't see. So he did this to Samson. Once he did that, he could lead him where he wanted to. Because now he's in a bad path in this situation. Now, understand this. But here we look at the fact that he's in a position of a stronghold. This is what the enemy does to people's minds all the time. So what he does, once he gets into the mind, he begins to take control of you from here. That's why if you don't tell yourself the things he's giving you, I must reject them immediately. If I don't, he's going to destroy you. So the stronghold is where Samson is right now. So the enemy is all around him. He is supposedly locked in. And the devil will do everything in his power to lock you in so you can't get out. 
So you say, well, I got up this morning with a mind. I really felt like I was going to do this, and I was going to do this today, and I was going to pray more today, and I was going to do this. What happened? Somewhere in the mind, the devil began to start his work. And if he can get your thoughts, see, we have what we call a thought life. Every person has one. So that's where all of our thoughts come. Our whole life is centered around that. It controls what you do, what you say, where you go. Everything is controlled from here. Now, unless we rid ourselves right away of this, then it goes into the heart where it is impossible for you to, to have victory over it. It destroys you. So what he does, he builds this stronghold in the mind. And, these, and, and the mind is he takes situations, he takes circumstances, he takes all kind of things that's happening in your life, and he plants them into the mind, a picture that he wants you to believe. So Samson now is in a position where a lot of people are. It don't, he seems like this is no way out. But when he realized that the two pillars that held it together, if he could reach those, he could, he could, he could get victory. So when the devil puts a stronghold in your mind, there is things that he used to make a pillar so that when you try to pull it down, you can't get it down. And so the longer it's there, the more likely you're not going to get free. If somebody don't pray and believe God for you, nine times out of ten, you're not going to get out. So listen to this. So when I begin to study about the pillars, the pillars are the thing in a building. These are pillars right here. They hold this building up. Now, uh, if you move them all the way across this building, there's pillars, one, two, three, four, five pillars. They're hold, holding this building. But now if you want it to come down, you have to move these. Otherwise, you can tear stuff down all around it, but the pillars will still be there. So what the enemy is doing to the people of God, he has established pillars out of your thought process. And what he's done, he's put it in a, in a situation where you said, have you ever noticed that you are the type of person that have a certain train of thought? That I, just, this, I think like this all the time. Not good. Because what it's doing to you, he is establishing his power in your mind. So if I can get you completely established there, I can destroy you. Because by there, most people don't know strongholds is the place where he wants to get you at. Because he, take, he took Samson to, first of all, to a place called Gaza, which was considered a strong city. And so now we're going to do what we need to do with him. You sit on the pew every Sunday. You hear the word of God. And your thought process will destroy you. You can hear it. You can say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't really think that's true. I don't know about that. The devil says, I need that. And little bit by little bit, he is establishing this into your mind to where you begin to think that way all the time. You've never prayed and paid attention to it. So what the devil tells you, if he tells you it's a horse, it's not a horse. But he's going to paint the picture to look like one. And so what you do, you get caught up in the fact that why do, what, it, well, it looks like a horse. It looks like that's what Sister Rose is saying. It looks like that's what it's about. Did you get what she said? He says, doubt it. Plant doubt. Plant this sense of, well, how do you know? Keep on adding that. After a while, he gets so con, uh uh, established in your mind till you can't shake it. So every time you come to church, he constantly did that. And, it's, and this thought, negative thoughts, the devil said, I, I can use that. If I can get you thinking negative, I can use negative thoughts because nothing negative comes from God. So there you sit in the church, and sometimes your mind is right on it, and all of a sudden, it'll change. He said, well, why am I thinking? Why am I thinking that? Why is my mind going like that? He's establishing something in your mind because eventually, if you don't pull down the stronghold that's in control of your mind, the thought process will get more and more intense and become harder and harder to get rid of. So you find yourself there trying to rid yourself of it, but you can't get it out. So, listen. 
if, if the devil will take you anywhere, he wants to take you when you cannot see and then bind you to the place that you can't get loose. If I, as the pastor, does not recognize this, does not see it, the devil will destroy you. And so sometimes I'm sitting up thinking, I sat up on the side of my bed this morning and thought, whoa. When the Lord was showing me something, I thought, my God, I got to call this person. I got to call this person because this is destructive. If they don't get from here, they won't make it. Because the devil's got your mind warped. Your mind is twisted. So what you should think straight about, it's, not, it's warped. It's crooked. So why do I think these crazy thoughts in my mind? The devil plants them there. The Bible says the thoughts of the righteous are right. So therefore, if I got some weird thoughts in my mind and questioning and doubting and all, he loves doubt. He loves questions. Because then I'll answer them with a lie. That's what you can't let him do. Listen, he, you, when you, when the devil gets a stronghold in your mind, you become a prisoner of your own thought. Can't get rid of him. You say, well, I, every time I think, but my mind just... I can't seem to clear it up. I can't seem to get my head on straight. He is in control of your thought process. And as long as he's got the power over it, you have none. And it continues to get worse. So you sit in church, you hear the words. Yeah, I know that's true. But he'll come in there right in the middle of that and twist that. And maybe later when you leave church, well, maybe that wasn't for you. Or maybe, maybe that wasn't the way. Well, that ain't the way you feel all the time. You better not feel that way any time. Because if you feel that way any time, he has an advantage. So I got to be sure that I don't let you get in here. So what the devil is about is taking control, <laughs> taking control of your, of your life. Now, understand Uh, the, pi uh, uh, the pillar is a structure that's pretty and strong enough that you don't break it. So if a storm comes or whatever happens, you still establish. You're still in good shape, except you're not. It all depends on what pillars he has planted in your mind that puts you in horrible shape. You can't, Samson realized the only way I could have victory, I had to tear the pillars down. The only way I could get out of here I had to be willing to die. I had to be willing to do whatever. You better be willing to do whatever it takes to get out. Because at this time, he realizes, I can't get out. I mean, I'm blind. I can't see. I'm bound up. So now, what must I do? The devil is making fun of this man. This man who God used in his service. He used him to deliver his people. So now Samson is there thinking, I know how I got here. I didn't realize it would take me here. That's what a lot of people don't realize. It's going to take you to a place you never thought you was going. Because it starts out over here, but it continues to build. And as long as it continues to build, it becomes more and more difficult to get control of it. When you see these people that are psychopaths and and, and they're killing people, and, 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 and these people that are um, they're pedophiles. They didn't start out being a pedophile. Somewhere in their mind, it got warped. It got twisted. You say, how would somebody want children? When you could have a grown woman, why was that? What happened in your mind that did that? That caused you to become perverted. And people never dawn on them, I am perverted. Because at this time, he's making you feel like this is something that's normal. It is not normal. But he makes you feel that way. Well, this is not bad. It's really, he starts off with the things that is not really bad. This is, this is just a thought. It was a thought that went through my mind. Watch it. The thought that went through your mind is going to become more than one thought. It's going to become another one that's going to attach to that. 
And the more that he gets them to do that, the more difficult it is for you to move it. So if you can't uh, put your strength into destroying the pillar, you can't be free. Because something is holding this in place. This thing is over my mind. I continually think this all the time. I find myself with dirty thoughts or evil thoughts or, or envious thoughts. I, these things go through my mind all the time. Nothing, like, nothing wrong should be going through your mind all the time. That is a sure sign that the devil is doing you a job. That's what he did to my ex-son-in-law. He messed his mind up. This is a boy that was in our family for 30 years. Married to my daughter. And that boy turned into a monster. His thoughts over the years. So many bad thoughts about me. The jealousy, the envy of me and my daughter's relationship. Never had any. I, and I have to look, think back on that and think. I never interfere with my kids' life. I'm, I'm at home. They're at home. They don't ever see me in their house hardly ever. Unless it's Christmas or Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't bother. I think people should learn to live their own lives. I was good to this boy. I mean, when he needed a friend, I was a friend. When he needed a person to help him in his project, I was that person. He called me mom all the time. But boy, when the devil got that boy's mind, it started over here. And it kept coming and it looked like it was gone. And I said to him one day, I said, you know what? If you don't get rid of the thoughts that you have against me, I'm going to expose you to the church for the liar and the hypocrite you are. Well, from that point on, he began trying to twist it to get it back. But he couldn't get it back. I remember just before the devil finished him, he called me on the phone from the prison. He said, he said, Mom, he said, uh, I don't know what it was. How am I going to get out of this? He said, I've been telling so many lies on you. And I said, well, I said, you need to get away from the guy in the prison who's insti put in instigating this stuff and putting it into your mind. I said, it was so evil. And he was screaming and hollering on the phone. And I said, Gary, I said, uh, I said, ask God to forgive you. He said, I can't forgive me. I know better than this, he said. I know better than this. He said, how do I forgive myself? This boy was weeping and crying up a storm. He said, how do I get out? He said, yeah, I believe you'll forgive me, Mom, but how do I forgive me for the lies I've told on you? I said, ask God to help you. He was so far in, he couldn't get out. And I told him, I said, go to the other guys in the prison. Go to them. Quit talking to this one man that's the devil's agent that is adding thoughts in your mind, constant thoughts that shouldn't be there. He's telling you lie after lie. The devil starts building a foundation in your mind with pillars that cannot be broken. And so all of a sudden, I'm just crazy. You can get so far out, you can't get in. But the, the sad thing about it, it destroyed him. It didn't destroy me. So every, every negative thought, every bad thing you said about me and done about me, none of it changed me. So the devil says, if I can get you to just hate her, he hated me. The boy that, that loved me to death, the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts. You got to think, if Sister Rose is up here preaching, the devil's sitting right in the audience. You don't think you think he ain't? Here come the thought. I'll say something you don't like. I said something, I don't agree with that. I said, well, who, who said? How does she know everything? I don't know everything, but this book knows it. <laughs> this book knows it. The pillar plays such an important role because it can literally handle an earthquake. That's how strong it is. Can you imagine having things in your mind like that, that even an earthquake couldn't shake it? You know you're going out. I saw this one girl that was in our church some years ago. She was from Jamaica. I helped her, I helped her to stay here. I got an apartment. I, we helped to pay the rent so she could get a job. And I was good to this girl, very good to this girl. 
She was a friend of my daughter's that passed away. She turned to be the worst enemy we ever had. And I would look sometime when I was preaching and she would be sitting on the back pew and she would turn, instead of looking forward, she would turn to the wall. I thought, you're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. Because what the truth is, the devil's going to be sure he try to make you believe it's not like that. It's really not that bad. You don't have to do all that. That's not important. Yes, it is. Listen. Listen to what you're hearing. Because if he tells you that, well, it's really, it's really not like that. This is, that's just a rose opinion. I don't have an opinion when it comes to this book. No. The Bible speaks for itself. All I do is tell you what the Bible says. But I don't make up an opinion about it. Then the devil does this. He starts making you think negative and bad thoughts, and then he hooks you up with somebody else in the church who thinks exactly like you. Which, which in that position, it, he, he really enforces it. You can't get out. Now you got two people. Where two people are united is strength. So I can strengthen this this way. If I put, if I take this pill and that pill and double it, I got double strength. Got to listen. He would like for you to believe what you hear from the pulpit is really not true. Oh, yeah, I believe some of that, you know what I mean. Don't explain it away. My daughter who passed away was a pillar in this church. She was a pillar. I mean, I was telling Nisa today, I said, boy, I really miss Wanda today. Boy, I miss her today. I said, I'm so used to coming out the room at 5 o'clock into my bedroom every Sunday, every Sunday. And we talk and we get ready for church. She was a pillar. Whether you agreed or whether you liked her or not, nothing changes the strength that she had. Yeah. Nothing changes it. And the fact that you don't even realize, and I think that's what's wrong with the church a lot of times, we don't even realize uh, the depth of a pillar and how it sustains things. Um, and I was thinking about that today, and I thought, wow. I think about the times that if I talk to nobody, I talk to Wanda. I could tell her things maybe I couldn't tell anybody else. And I sit in my chair this afternoon, and I thought what I would give to have another time to talk to you, what I would give. It will never happen. But for the moment, my mind went back over all the things that she was and the things that happened that were so good that flowed from her. She wasn't shaken. She was, what, she was who she was. We as a family, I don't think we even know how much that we really depended on Juana. I don't think we did until it's gone. You move that pillow, you're going to say, it's a problem in the building. We got this shaking in here all the time, and it looks like the ceiling's coming down. They moved the pillow. And I thought, and Nisi said to me when Juana died, she said, Mama, I thought Juana was going to be here to help us to get through your day. I never thought she would be gone from me. And the Lord said to me the other day, no, that pillars move for this also. That when you go, they must depend on me. They're not going to lean on anybody else. They're going to lean on me because that's their ticket to the kingdom. Yes. Don't let him get your mind in a place that you can't get out. If you find yourself going there, you need to say, help. Help me, somebody. Help me. My mind is messed up. I can't seem to get out. And after Sister Rose talked to me, I find myself going there again and again. What's wrong with me? You better ask for help. You better pray and seek God. The Lord, I need you to help me. Because if you don't, you don't destroy the pillars, you are not going to tear it down. And those pillars are built upon your opinions and lies from the enemy and negative things that's going on in your life. Air, please. All these negative things that's going on in your life. 
Think about it. He can mess you up so bad you sit in church and you hear, but you don't hear. I've been preaching sometimes, looking at audience, you see people like this. They didn't get it. The mind has a block in it. When the mind gets blocked, you cannot hear. You can't see. It's like whatever he wants to tell you, that's all you hear. You don't hear the good. You don't hear the things that you really need to hear because he's got your mind blocked. So sometimes when I'm talking to people, I said, you didn't see that? You didn't hear that? You didn't recognize that? And they'll say, no, ma'am. And I'm thinking, how did you miss that? It's been where they're at. And sometimes they're so far back, you can't get in there to them. So you're trying your best to get there and say, come out, come out. If you don't come out, you won't be able to make it. Who comes in to destroy those pillars? God's going to have to send somebody in to break that thing down and cause it to become nothing. That's why you can't get up. You start up, but you get back down. You start up, you get back down. That's because the things that's in your mind, you can't get rid of it. Because no matter how you try, your mind travels back there. It'll go back there. If you can't agree with the word, you can't agree with nothing. You can't agree, uh, agree with nothing. So you got to look at your life and say, you know what? I can't afford to have my thoughts messed up. You ever seen people in deep thought and you say, what you thinking? Oh, nothing. Oh, no. You're always thinking something. There, there are no empty thoughts. Thoughts are there. They, they are loaded. They have things there. And so you got to say, wait a minute. Where am I going? It scares me for people who let him get in there and get so far in till you can't get out. No, honey, you better get out of there. That will backslide you. Samson was backslid when he was in this shape. But he said, God have mercy on me. Look at me. Usually mama tell me something you don't even bother me. I said, thank you, mama, I appreciate it. Why is it this time? What's causing that? You better get out of there or you will never get out. You got to scream it out. You got to say, no. You're not doing this to me. What are you doing to me? Because what I'm doing now, I'm changing your feelings toward her. I'm changing it because you look at me different. If you always looked at me like, and now it's as dangerous, you're in a road or a path, you will never free yourself. I said, no, you're not getting ready to mess me up. I'm getting ready to shout anyhow. I'm getting ready to praise God anyhow. Yeah, I may have made some mistakes. I fell along the wayside, but hey, I'm not going out like that. Who could you cut the level shunda? I'm not going out like that. The devil is a liar. You are taking me over. Yeah. Glory be to God. Until you can stand up, you can't get rid of him. You need to stand and say, no, 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 no. I'm not your Kosatala Bashanda. I'm not letting you do this to me. God has given me power. Power over all the power of the enemy. No, you're not doing this to me. When you find yourself in a position where you can't move and your head is hung down, the devil's got a thing on you. Yes, he's got a thing on you. Do the deal, quarter about shut down. I gotta be free. I got to be free in my mind. In my mind. I be free. No, no. No. I got to be free. I got to be able to think right. I got to be able to think right. I'm thinking wrong. He's showing me what a failure I am. He's showing me you'll never get better. And you messed up and you're going to mess up again. You are a liar. You are a liar. 
Samson, Samson had to go out in a bad way, but yet a victorious way. He said, God, forgive me. Remember me. Have mercy on me. And last, hey, if you can't see, tell somebody, lead me to the pillars so I can pull it down. The stronghold in my life. I got to be free. I got to be able to think straight. I got to be able to look at things and see it for what it is and not let the devil defeat me. Yes. If I got rebuked, it's because I did it. If I got reproved, because I did something. It don't just come to be coming. Yes. Think about it for a minute. Yeah, circumstances. Circumstances, different circumstances have the opportunities to greatly affect what we believe. Certain things we go through that we believe about ourselves. We have an enemy who will take advantage of every negative circumstance and say, I'm going to use that, I'm going to build me something. I'm going to change this. Quit believing that I'm going to let him continue to hold me here. There's nothing worse than being bound in your mind because you'll be looking at TV and don't even see it. You'll be looking at hearing music and don't even hear it. You'll drive down the street looking at the light red and never see it. That's where that mind is. How did you not see the light is red? And you kept going. Mind wasn't on it. How many times have you drove somewhere and don't know how you got there? You think, how did I get here? Couldn't even remember the journey. He's got your mind. When he gets your mind, he's going to get your soul. This is the battleground right here. You have to get rid of it. The strongholds, that's a, a pattern of thought. People think certain ways. That's just them. You say, oh, that's them. That's the way they think. Well, so-and-so said that, well, yeah, they always think like that. Check your thoughts. See, where am I at? Why am I always going negative with everybody? Why every time I look at everybody, something's wrong with everybody but me? What's wrong with that picture? What is wrong with that? Everybody ain't wrong. Somebody's right. The minute I start talking to a person, I can tell where the train of thought is. You know, you've got to pull all this out, pull that out, pull that out. Otherwise, they'll never hear a word you say. Pull it all out. Because if you don't, when you try to get in, it's, it's barred up. It's been enforced. Well, I, well, Sister Rose, I used to didn't think that way, but after a while I thought, my son-in-law... He called other preachers on me. He called preachers wives I don't even know. He told so many lies. He sat in the chaplain's office and lied for hours upon hours. But you know me. So when you hear this stuff, you think, but you know me. You can't be in my life 30 years and not know me. You don't even have to be in my life 30 years. You come to this church a few times, you find out who I am. It's about truth. Sister Rose is about truth. That's what, that's what uh, Pooksy's mother told him. Sister Rose is from the old school, but what she preaches is the truth. What, what's going to set me free? Truth. No matter what the devil says, truth will free me. If I receive that and take it, it will free me. Then I can go forward. I don't care what your mama said or your daddy said. I don't care what your other preacher said. Listen to the word of God. If this is the thing. You can't put no confidence in some of these preachers. They don't tell you the right thing. I thought, I thought Dustin was the other day when I, she said, how do I pray? I think you've been in the church all this time. She doesn't even know how to pray. This is a tragedy. So after a while, you don't think prayer. You don't pray. You don't think prayer. I think prayer every day of my life. Laying on the bed, meditate, talking to God. Sometimes loud, sometimes no, no sound, but I'm talking to God. My whole process of my mind is God, 
God, God, God, God. I don't have to have all this other stuff. Because what he called me to do, it is vitally important that I get this done. It's vitally important that I get the instructions out to you that when the Lord takes me home, you know what to do. I must, I must make that happen. I must get it in your head till you hear it day and night. Sister Rose, Sister Rose said that. Sister Rose said this. Sister Rose. You remember what she said? Remember that message? Remember that message? That's what you got to get in your head. Because what he wants to do is push the word out. The word frees us. Don't let him get to you. That is, when he get through establishing this over a period of time, it doesn't happen overnight, but over a period of time, he establishes it. So I can say to you in the audience, you need to, hey, hey, listen, you need to change that. She's trying to embarrass you. No, he's a liar. This is not about embarrassment. This is about shaking you. You see, sometimes you whisper to a person and say, come back here, don't do that. Come back here, uh-uh, don't do that. And you said, and they keep doing, say, stop that. They say, oh, you talking to me? Yes. I'm preaching in the pulpit. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I just called your name. You got it? I'm talking to you. Sometimes you got to call people's name because they don't hear. This blockage in their mind, they can't hear it. Say, like, hey, Rose, Jane, Thomas. And they say, huh? Now I got your attention. Listen. Listen. Because he's right there to say, the minute I finish, he's right there to say, you don't have to take that. It's for your benefit. It's for your help. It's going to fix your life. I cannot drive it home hard enough. God, help me to get this truth to your people that they may see. That Satan's got so many tactics that causes mental warfare in our mind. Over time, he causes a battle to rage. Sometimes people are rage inside you. They don't look like it. They look like they're okay. But inside, they're at a war. Their mind is just going and going and going. That's what he does to people when they go out and shoot a bunch of people. He got into their mind. You go to visualize them, thinking this, thinking that. When you're righteous, your thoughts are righteous. Otherwise, he's going to cause your mind to get all messed up. You say, ah, if I could just stop my head, if I could just stop my head, from, I don't want to think. Why is all my thoughts bad? Why is all my thoughts mixed up and confused? The devil is the author of confusion. If he can confuse your mind, like, I don't know, what the, I don't know what's going on. What's, that, what's going on? Calm down. People that panic make bad decisions. People that won't take a minute to be quiet, be quiet. That's why God told, it, told Moses, tell them to be still. Be still. Quit going crazy. Look, what well, you brought to us out of here, and look at this. We got nowhere to go, and the Red Sea is in front of us. What are we going to do in a panic? Calm down. Don't get things done in a rage and all upset and, and, and crazy. The devil said, I love that. Get the mind distracted, all messed up, and so on, so on, so on. And then he jumps in. Stay calm. In the midst of the storm, don't panic. Stay calm. That's what I told Tanique the other day when she got home. She's been traveling a lot. She's tired. She's moving. And then, then the movers break her, her bedroom suit. They break another thing. And, she comes and says, Sister Rose, I didn't have a problem. I said, Sister Rose, I didn't have a problem. I said, Sister Rose, I didn't have a problem. I said, calm down. She said, oh, okay. Then. I said, calm down. <laughs> because you getting upset is not going to fix that. Just calm down. Wait a minute. If push comes to shove, I can get another bedroom suit. If push comes to shove, no use in panicking. Because at that moment, while you're in a panic, the devil says, put this in there, put that in there, put that. Circumstances, situations. So if he gets you in, a, in an uproar, then he got time to stick it in there. Put that in there. 
because you ain't paying attention, see. So you don't know he, he's doing things to you because you're all in the uproar. But he's messing with your head. So by the time you get to being upset, you're like, <laughs> he said, what's wrong? I don't know. I don't know. When the devil drops off a bag, he fills it up with all kind of stuff. You know what he do? You say, what's in that bag? He said, I don't know. You know why? Because they're all grapes. Got a whole bunch of stuff mixed up in there. That's to bring confusion. So if I can get you confused, I can get in your mind. I don't know what to think. You know, I think I was thinking like I thought. You know, I thought well, I really believed that this was what it was, and and I just got all I'm all mixed up. Don't listen to crazy preachers. They'll mix your mind up like this. I listened to Jimmy Swaggart this morning for a little bit. I turned him off because I got sick of him, and. They were sitting there trying their best to find a way to make you understand that it was okay to sin. He attacks the position. He attacks this. And I thought, why are y'all making this complicated? The devil attacks you for your soul. Sin is going to destroy you. You'll either do it God's way or sin's going to destroy you. Why are you taking these people through all this crap? What he's trying to do is make a justification for his sin. He sinned. He, he laid up with a prostitute. And he's still trying to fix it. I thought, get off the television. This ain't complicated. Him and both of them was going back and forth over. Well, you know, so when he attacks the position, then it, does that... Does that mean you still have to sin or you're you, you going to still sin? It was so mixed up. I thought, y'all are crazy. God's word ain't confusing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Satan is an accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you of you. He will accuse you, accuse somebody else of you. Yeah. Look at her, how she's looking at you. She, she, she always treats you funny. Person, huh? You know what people have said to me? Sister Rose was looking at me. I thought, she just keeps looking at me. I said, baby, I never saw you. I got other things to do. You know what I'm just saying? If I stop for a moment to look at you, God's telling me something. And you need not worry. You will get the message. It's not like you got to be troubled by it. I'm going to give it to you. Don't worry. This road, the Lord tell you anything about me. Tell me. I said, baby, that's a thing you never have to say. I'm coming to you. I'll be the first. Ring your number. Hey, how you doing? Most people are not real fond of me on the other end of the phone. <laughs> I said, hey. Hey. Sister Rose. Yes, ma'am. And then silence. What is it? I'll tell you in a minute. And sometimes what I got to call them for is good. They do such devilish things, they think everything is bad. <laughs> Don't blame me for it. You think that you, that you always messed up. So she couldn't be calling me for something good. It's got to be bad because I ain't never did nothing right. The devil sold you that. He accused you of that. You're a failure. You're going to keep failing. You see how she told you before and you went back to it again? That's who you are. You're going to die like that. I felt sorry for the Kennedy girl who killed herself recently. She said from the time she was in middle school, she told us she was depressed, and she told herself this was demon power. The devil said to her, you will be this way for the rest of your life. And she said, I'll always be, be careful what you say. I'll be this way the rest of my life. The devil told her that. So you know what he did? If you're going to be this way the rest of your life, depressed, you might as well end it at some point and just get out of it. Or what she don't realize, hell was on the other side. You don't know that. I look at these people being shot and killed, and you think, how many of these people were saved? God protects his people. Protects you. The angels of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him. How many of those people weren't ready to meet God? You know what the parents would say? Can you believe that God sent my kid to hell after being shot? Were they ready to meet God? He doesn't say how we're going to leave this life, but I believe Christians are protected. The angels of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him. These preachers got a security teams following them around. I thought, where's y'all's angels? You lie so much they left.
<laughs> I don't need no bodyguard. I got angels. They take care of me. Yes. A blind man said in our church one time, said over there, what was his name? Lester. He was blind. He couldn't see. And I got to preach it one Sunday morning. Sister Rose, could I talk to you for a minute? I said, yeah, sure. And I came down. He said, I need to tell you something. I said, what is it? He said, I told the Lord. You was the first one that won me to the Lord. He said, I told him, I can't see Sister Rose. Would you let me see her? He said, do you know there's two angels in the pulpit on either side of you? I said, no, I didn't know that. He said, the light is so bright until it's shown on your face, and I can tell you how you look. That man described me to the letter. I said, what? He said, you got brown eyes? He could tell the color of my eyes. Your hair is black and you got four little cheeks. I said, yeah. He said, I saw all the details in your face, everything. I said, God, thank you. He said, but the light from the angels was so bright until it let me see your face. I know they're here. They take care of me every day. I may not see them with the natural eye, but they're here because the word says so. They encamp around about me. They're taking care of me. In spite of, I remember one night the Lord showed me some years ago. I was lying in my bed and I looked up and there were two angels standing at the foot of my bed. This I actually saw. This is not some joke. This is true. Standing at the foot of my bed. And I leaned over to say, why are you here? And this is what they said. We're here to protect you, not to communicate. I'm thinking, hey, I'm taking care of it at night, daytime, <laughs> anytime. So why, ain't, why I'm not having a great time? You ain't going to, you can't shoot me. You have to get the angel first. Because they encamp round about me. That's when you do what's right. That's when you serve God, when you do it right. It makes a difference. So let me tell you this. The enemy can't get to your mind if God has control. But if you didn't give him control, two forces in the world, one is the devil and one is God. And you either going to let one control your life or the other. You choose. I choose to let God do it for me. He'll do it for you. So don't, don't, let, the, don't let the devil tell you, well, you're always going to be this way. There ain't no way. This is what the Lord said to Jeremiah. He said, thus said the Lord, put forth, put forth his hand and touch my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. So as, as a servant of God, giving you power to throw down rose, tear it down, root it up. Yeah. Don't let it stay there. If they, if they want out, help them out. Because I gave you the power to speak to it. Yes. You can't build till you tear down. We want to grow stronger in God, we got to tear down some stuff. He's not going to build on top of sand, a junk, a bunch of trash. That's where the church is today. It's a lot of trash in the churches, and the devil put it in your mind and your heart. That's why you got to be careful who you listen to. Paul said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He says, casting down imaginations. Can you imagine a person always imagining crazy things? Boy, I have, great, I have unbelievable imagination. It's not true. I mean, you can imagine that I'm sitting on top of the world, and everything is going the way I want it. And everything around me is bowing me. This is what's going on here. You are just as stupid as the day is long. None of that's happening. The devil gets into the imagination of the mind. Make you imagine this, imagine that. Go through all this crap. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought. Bring your thoughts into captivity. Arrest your thoughts. Arrest them. You're, no, no, that's not happening. You're in control. 
into the obedience of Christ. Bring it into captivity. I obey what God tells me to do. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I don't care about anything else. That's what I'm doing. He's always going to come around. You don't have to let him in. If he gets in, he takes control. That's what he's done to a lot of people. The reason why they have no victory. They have no victory at all. Listen, listen tonight. I hope that you understand the power of the mind. And the devil uses it to his own advantage. And he takes your situations and your circumstances and he builds what he wants to build in your mind. And he can build a whole tunnel of nothing but lies. And the scripture says, if I believe a lie, I'll be damned. You cannot survive that. Don't believe it. You can always tell when the devil got people's mind because they start lying. You say, you okay? I'm fine. You're crazy. You ain't fine. You're crazy. And, and the sad part, it's nothing worse than being crazy. I don't know. Crazy and don't know him. So, so I got to come and say, come here, you're crazy. I'm not crazy, Sister Rose. I know. I'm, I, I'm not crazy. I have my own mind. No, you don't. The devil's got your mind in full control. And you sitting around talking a bunch of crap about, uh, I'm in control of my own life. No, you're not. The devil's doing, making you do everything he wants you to do, and he puts it right here. And, and you, before we make a move, we think about it. Eat. Work out. Tell her off. Don't take it no more. Before you make any action, it came here first. That's why they know, excuse me, it's just, it one of those things just happened. No, you thought about that. It comes here first, and then you act on it. That fool that did all that shooting, he thought about it. You know what? He probably thought he was doing Trump a favor. Because he said, what are we going to do with these immigrants? And one of Trump's supporters said, shoot them. And, and Trump laughs about it. You gave that man the okay to shoot. That's leadership. What you should have said, no, you don't want to do that. But when you laughed about it, that's what Mr. Trump would want to do. He can't do it, so I'll help him. Sick. Everything in his manifesto online was all Trump's language. The thoughts in his mind was what Donald Trump said, Donald Trump said. And he is just screwing up things left and right. And I told him, I said, the day he stood at that rally in May and said, what are we going to do with them? They're a bunch of crooks. This man said, I targeted Mexicans. Mexicans. You know why? Because Trump said they're no good. They're, they're drug addicts. They're murderers. They're all these things. If I sit in this pulpit and tell you the same thing over and over again, after a while you start to believe it. That's mind control. After a while I said, yeah. First of all, I didn't believe it, yeah. Mental? Ask the Lord, say, Lord, keep my mind. Because that's how he said, Lord, keep me sanctified. Lord, keep my mind. Lord, keep my mind. He that keep his mind stayed on him. He keeps him in perfect peace. So no matter what's happening, you have peace. The devil wants to shake you up, make you scared, get you panicking, and then he jumps in with all this stuff. And by the time you get through and settle down, you got a whole bundle of stuff. Learn to stay calm in the midst of the storm. There's peace in the time of trouble. Peace in the midst of the storm. Peace when the battle is raging in the shelter of his arms. Just stay calm. You'll get through it. If I call on you for something, don't panic. I'm not coming to beat up nobody. I'm coming to talk to you. I'm coming to tell you how much I love you. Okay. So you got to watch the enemy. He is out to destroy you. And he comes through the mind with imagination, with thoughts. And I must clear that out. Clear it out. You're not going to have victory until you do. Because if your mind's messed up when you pray, 
you're not going to stay focused on prayer. It'll just wander over here, wander over there. One, yeah, I was thinking about her the other day, praying. Yeah, uh-huh. it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was down in prayer, and all of a sudden, it just come to me, so and so and so and so. Uh, God ain't talking to you along that line. I thought it was God. You crazy. My little grandson used to say, every time we did something, <laughs> he didn't understand. He said, they crazy. <laughs> Kyle used to say all the time, they crazy. No, we weren't crazy. He didn't understand. So you want to keep your mind clear. If you, that's why you can't pray. I guarantee you, the mind is so full of so many things, you can't pray because you can't focus. You've got to be able to focus on God. I'm talking to God. I want him to fix this. I want him to work this out for me. I can't have all this in my mind. The devil says, you didn't turn the stove off. You thought you did. The beans going to burn up. You better get up here and check that. Go check the stove is off. And something else. Did you know you did? Did you do such and such a thing? Did you call so and so? I bet you didn't take care of that. Did you take care of that? Uh, can't get through. You give him that kind of access, he's gonna build something that is so strong, a stronghold in your mind, you'll never get free. It's okay. If you ain't married and you're waiting for a mate, don't go on an imagination trip. I could just see myself. <laughs> you know, I, I could just see myself just making love to somebody. Come out. Come out. Ain't nobody there. Why are you going through those changes? I just, for a minute, for a minute I was gone. The devil says, yeah, I'm going to do, do you a job. You're crazy. I told people in this church that wasn't married, wasn't on the Lord to give you a husband or wife. Quit looking at programs on TV that's got sex scenes in them. And then come on, I told the Lord, give me victory. I need victory. I need victory. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. I, if I feed myself that, that's, what I, that's what's in me. Don't feed yourself that. You can't do nothing with it. Ask the Lord to give you a husband or wife. Until he does, baby, forget it. You, you going on fantasy trips ain't going to do you a bit of good. Fantasize yourself right on in the hell until you stone crazy. You say, where are you going? I don't know. I just, my mind, man, my mind. They try to get through this. I want to be saved, but there's so much going on. I mean, I need somebody. You do. You really do. God. That's what you need. The man said to me, oh, Sister Rose, don't you need a companion? I said, honey, I have one. Are you stupid? He's there with me every day, every night. I have a companion. And he don't come home late at night. He don't upset me. I got peace. I'm happy. Stand to your feet. There is peace. At the foot of the cross, there is peace. At the foot of the cross, oh, you just lay down your burdens. Lay down. Joy at the food. 